Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So I know this will be my fourth TikTok reaction video in a row, but as I said in the second and third, you guys really seem to like them, and I really like making them, so I guess I'm now making a fourth. And oh, what an important fourth it is. So far I've done feminist TikTok, gender fluid TikTok, and CRT TikTok, but today I'm doing something much more uh, interesting than the previous three. I'm talking about, of course, Male feminist TikTok. Now, I should identify exactly what I mean by a male feminist. I do not mean the type of mid 20th century men who march for women's equality of opportunity rather than equality of outcome, which really is the crux of modern feminist ideology. I am talking about men who publicly call themselves allies to women while using that to cozy up to insecure women for their own personal gain, so to speak. By which I mean, in crude terms, getting into their pants. They do this by relentlessly telling the women they meet that women are inherently oppressed by men. That's not new since women feminists say that all the time, but the difference is male feminists augment that message by insinua insinuating that they, a male feminist ally, will facilitate women's freedom. In other words, placing the power in the hands of men rather than poor or helpless women who are simply beholden to the behaviour of bad guys and that they, the nice guys, will always watch out for them. Male feminists chip away at women feminists' low self-esteem and insecurities by making them even more insecure and then taking advantage of that emotional vulnerability while claiming to be on the side of women. In other words, they are closet misogynists who see women as objects to be manipulated and for the closet misogynist, male feminism is the best place to be. First of all, you get to demean women by denying their agency to take care of themselves under the guise of wanting to empower women so you often won't get called out on it. That's the tacit misogyny. And second, you also get to happily exercise your overt misogyny by laying into conservative women with all of the quintessentially sexist rhetoric that women feminists would decry as the worst kind of misogyny if directed at themselves or another feminist. It's a win-win for male feminists in this arena. There's also the inherent entitlement a lot of male feminists feel to women's approval, by which I mean sexual partnership, thanks to all their hard work as male feminist allies. And if they don't get that approval, well just look at this brilliant parody of a male feminist for a wholly accurate representation of uh, their reaction to this rejection. Tell me you're a male feminist without telling me you're a male feminist. I'll start. So I have this friend, McKenna. Great girl. She was dating this guy named Tanner. Not a great guy. He would disrespect her. He would not treat her like the queen she was. He would cheat on her, probably. Didn't have any direct evidence of that part, but I'm sure he did. And I would remind her of this daily. And finally, she broke up with him. So I'm hanging out with her after, and she goes, Cole, I wish I could find a guy just like you. So naturally, I made a move on her, and she rejected me. I'm like, excuse me? You wish you could find a guy just like me? Bitch, I am me! Hook up with me! I've been putting in the time! I deserve this! You owe me! I'm just gonna keep going for the bad boys, then you're gonna keep getting your heart broken, and you'll deserve it! You need to go for the good guys like me, nice guys like me! Just give me a chance and let me show you how nice I am! I will be so much f***ing nicer to you than the other guys! Just let me show you how f***ing nice I can be, you stupid bitch! God damn it! So without further ado, Let's get stuck into male feminist TikTok. So pick me. Choose me. <laughs> Love me. I'm not kink shaming. I get that you like to be dominated, but it's very bold of you to assume that all women do. Some women, and this is crazy, they want a guy that will treat them as an equal. And one more thing, male feminists, <laughs> here's the thing about male feminists. We're all gay. And this video just made me a little bit gayer, so thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's a thing that I forgot to mention in the intro. There are a number of male feminists who are gay, and that's kind of a whole, that's a whole different dynamic. I would not call gay male feminists closet misogynists by any stretch of the imagination. I, re I reckon that the reason some gay men are drawn to being male feminists is because, let's be real, gay men and straight women specifically have 
always had kind of an, an inherent bond. I think there are all sorts of reasons for that. First of all, it means that, you know, you get the the benefits of being friends with someone of the opposite sex, you know, which is always a good dynamic, but without always that kind of risky potential for romantic feelings to develop, which can absolutely ruin a friendship. Uh, and second of all, it means that women can be friends with someone that doesn't involve the sort of inherent risk of getting competitive. And you know how female friendships can become really competitive and really toxic and sort of frenemies, so to speak? You don't get that with gay men. I think the third reason is that throughout history, women, or straight women, uh, also lesbians, but women and gay men have been on a sort of similar journey in terms of, you know, fighting for recognition and, you know, equal rights and all equality of opportunity, so to speak. I think the gays probably had a harder time um, than women in a lot of respects, not all respects, but I don't know, maybe, we're, I don't know, but certainly both have had a hard time historically. So there's sort of that cultural bond, so to speak. Um, so yeah, the, the, the gay male feminist is a whole nother kettle of fish. Also, while we're here, if you've made it this far through this video, you obviously like my content at least a little bit, so how about you subscribe to my second channel for even more of my content. It's called Daisy, uh, it is my fun non-political video, I'll be making videos about everything from uh, film reviews to, you know, a little bit of self-help occasionally. I think I've even got ghost stories up there, obviously cat content. Uh, the link to my second channel and also the most recent video on it are in the video description and in the pinned comment. Please, please, please click on them, like, subscribe, watch my videos and let me know what you think. I would love to have you over there at my second channel. People often ask me, what right do women not have that men do? They good point, point to the law and they say, look, women are equal under the law. Very good which point. is great. I'm so glad the law supports women. Mm -hmm. The problem is culture does not. Whoa. Is he actually saying in 2021, after the last like 10 years of, of third and fourth wave feministing that culture doesn't support women? I mean, it's, that's like he's, uh, the, okay, this is what I get with a lot of male and female feminists. They're actually still stuck in the culture war of the 80s and 90s because they can't accept the fact that feminists actually won that culture war, you know, generally speaking. And so the fact that that culture war was won is actually bad for feminists because if they don't have something to kind of gripe about, then they are really nothing. So they pretend that we're still in that culture war, even though they won that culture war and we're in a totally different one, but yes, culture really does support women. Anyway, to continue. We're still trying to restrict what women do with their bodies. I whoa, 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 some, some women are uh, very pro-life. This is what male feminists and also women feminists forget. There are actually a heck of a lot of women out there who are pro-life and anti the termination of pregnancy in the womb to use YouTube friendly terminology. But no, 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 that's always painted by feminists as kind of a men versus women issue, like stagnant old men taking away women's right to bodily autonomy. I mean, shut up, that's not the case at all. The media still sets an unrealistic expectation of what a woman should look like. And women suffer eating disorders. And so some turn to self-harm. So because they can't attain what the media says they should be. Also, we still shame women for having sex in the year 2020. Not really. So why do I talk about feminism on TikTok? Because TikTok is a cultural tool, and I'm tired of women being treated this way. I want to change culture, not law. Culture. Right. Unless he is a gay male feminist, which look, he, he, he might be. He seems to be sort of, you know, ambiguous in that department. Not stereotyping anyone, but, you know, so sometimes as a woman you can tell. Um... Yeah, that's the sort of attitude there. It's like, you know, I'm going to change culture, etc. It's like, you know, it's all perfectly fine. You know, I'm going to do it as a man. Anyway, let's move on. When I asked men what they feared, as much as a woman feared being raped, I had three answers show up a number of times. Two of them I think we can dismiss, and one of them seemed valid. Hmm. The first one was that men said they feared not measuring up. But while that's a valid fear, the pressure you put on yourself to live up to your perceived role in society is very different than the fear a woman may have of what a man may do to her without her consent. Okay, that's Vastly a fair different point. fears. Let's fair put point. that one aside. The second one I saw a lot of was men saying that they feared being falsely accused of rape and having that ruin their lives. First of all, demonstratively untrue. Trump, Kavanaugh. Oh, oh my God! Typical lefty. I mean, first of all. 
Yes, Trump was accused of some unsavory things. However, none of that was ever proven. None of it has ever been tested in court. You know, and considering the amount of people who hate Donald Trump from an activist level, I'm sorry. You've got to take that into consideration. Also, they never seem to care about the fact that not only has Joe Biden been a a accused of sexual assault, there's also ample footage of him on the internet sniffing children. So glass houses and all that. And second of all, Kavanaugh, excuse me, like seriously, no sensible f person found Christine Blasey Ford convincing. Anyway, uh, that, sorry, YouTube overlords, but that, that, that is my opinion. Anyway, uh, let's move on. This is already shaping up to be really bad. Secondly, while statistics are notoriously hard to pin down, it's at least arguable that a man is more likely to be raped than to be falsely accused of rape. Citation the needed. Is vanishingly small. So what checks all the boxes? What has the systemic, pervasive, uh, the antagonism, the, the realistic threats of violence? The one that rang true to me was how black men feel. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, okay. Cut total delusional leftists for all the reasons I just mentioned. All right. So Black Lives Matter has manufactured, well, at least nowadays it's manufactured this image that, you know, black men are at an inherent fear, a terrible deathly fear of getting killed by police uh, whenever they run into them. That That is the general fear. And it's really been sort of fostered over the last uh, couple, of, couple of years. But the thing is, the statistics do not ring true. I mean, uh, for instance, we know for a fact that the biggest killer of black men by far, like by the several thousands, is other black men because of the, uh, gang violence in, in places like Detroit and, and, and Baltimore and of course Chicago. Thank you, Laurie Lightfoot. Um, and if you're wondering about the, the actual numbers of unarmed black men that are killed by police, because the key, they're all black people actually that are killed by police because the key there is unarmed. Um, according to, this is for the 2020 numbers, last time I checked, which was sort of towards the end of 2020, um, according to a combination of the Washington Post uh, police database, which keeps track of this stuff, and also um, a website called uh, Mapping Police Violence, very, very handy resource, the total number of black unarmed black deaths at the hand of hands of police, not just including guns, but also things like you know being beaten or being run over with a car, all of them together was a grand total of 32. Them's the numbers. That's that that's a fact. So yeah, typical delusional lefty male feminist. So you'd probably be the first person to call a conservative woman the c-word. Men who make laws about women's bodies don't know where the clitoris is. Not surprising considering how low that state's literacy is. <laughs> if you're a woman and think it's wrong, that's fine and done. If you're against the don't get one. Okay, that's a not particularly intellectually thorough message. He's talking about Texas, by the way. It was must have been after, you know, Texas introduced those rather stringent laws. Um, but I, again, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of the lawmakers who, who push these, for these kind of laws are women, just, just, just so you know. you know. Again, that kind of false narrative. And as for the last bit, seriously, are you, are you a man actually telling pro-life women to effectively stay in their lane over this? When you've said, when feminists have said clearly a million times that men shouldn't have an opinion on However, what they actually mean is that men shouldn't have an opinion on it if they're pro-life. They're perfectly happy for pro-choice men to have their rampant opinions on the termination of pregnancy, but uh, yeah, if you're pro-life, no. So it's men can't have an opinion on a unless they are pro-choice, in which they can have any opinion, any, any kind of platform they want to spout their opinion on the termination of pregnancy. It's stupid. Although I love the drumming. I'm actually going to give this one a pass because I love the kind of poetry and drumming stuff that's hilarious. Instead of asking, why do feminists hate men? Ask yourself why a movement that's quite literally about the liberation of women is misunderstood so badly that it's still about men. Because literally all feminists talk about is men. Like their their whole... Their whole basis of their movement is about men rather than women. That's why the, the, that's why you know when feminists say, "Oh, we don't have men." Yes, yes, you do hate men because your whole concept of 
all evil and oppression in the world you call patriarchy. Patriarchy is an inherently male term if you look at the root of the word and it's totally to do with men. Therefore your whole movement is about saying the essence of men and what they have created allegedly is bad and that patriarchy which is inherently a masculine male thing associated with men is effectively the root of all evil. That renders the entire movement as anti-male and man-hating. You know, people don't sort of consider that enough, but that that really is is the thing there. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is the uh, the best or worst of male feminist TikTok. I hope you're all as suitably horrified as I am. Uh, let me know what you think of this video and this content in the comment section. I would love to know your thoughts. If you like that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.